morning, everyone. Here we are, the season of Advent, the season of Christmas, and we're apart, and yet we're together because of Christ Jesus. Let's start this morning with some announcements. Um, let's see. I think I've made it pretty clear that there aren't going to be any activities here in the church, but just to clarify, there won't be any active shooter training in December as scheduled. We'll reschedule that in the spring. If you have hats and mittens to donate to the cause, you can let me know, let Sandy know, um, or bring them to the church. If you've got a key, just set them inside the door. If you don't have a key, let me know that they're here and stick them in a waterproof bag behind the sign by the door and I'll get them when I'm here. I'll be in and out each week. <clears throat> also, the same thing for canned goods. We'll have to be careful with them that they don't freeze. But if you want to contribute those towards the food bank, again, let me know and we'll uh, get those to where they need to go. Next Sunday will be Holy Communion. And what I would like to do is ask those of you that will be watching live at home, if you can have elements prepared, just a slice of bread and some juice, your morning coffee, it's the symbolism. And together we will share in Holy Communion. For those of you that might be watching later, um, if you'd like me to fix you up a packet for Home Communion, I'd be happy to do that and do a door drop or a mailbox drop this week. Just get in touch with me and let me know I'm going to have those prepared here in a day or two and I can do those as a drop off so you can use those or use them in your own time as well to uh, celebrate Holy Communion. And let's see, um, if you are users of the Upper Room and Daily Bread, the December, January ones are here. Uh, if you need those, let me know. I know a couple people that's let me know already. If you need them, let me know again on my circuit. I will drop those off for you as well. And um, then on Christmas Eve services, uh, Sandy and I were kind of deliberating and we decided that we're going to try to do those on Wednesday the 23rd at 5 in the evening. Um, and they'll be recorded, of course, just like all of our Facebook Live services are. So you can watch them if you wish to wait until Christmas Eve, that's fine. If you want to share with us that evening on Wednesday the 23rd is fine. I'll get you information in the uh, bulletin that I email out later today, but uh, we will do somewhat our traditional service other than there won't be more than maybe three of us involved in that. So, And then uh, the shoe boxes have gone out. Uh, the turnout wasn't great this year for those, uh, but Sandy said that the turnout wasn't great anywhere given the conditions and all that was going on. But we're grateful to those who uh, were able to contribute and willing to do that, so thank you for that. So let's have a word of prayer. God, this morning we are a grateful people that you've protected so many. We can get so overwhelmed by all of those that have the virus and other illnesses, but God, you are a good God. And when we look at the numbers, we realize that even though there are more getting sick, there are still a lot of healthy people working hard to keep themselves and their families healthy, and we are grateful that you're protecting us. God, be with those that have the virus, that have other illnesses going on, that are homebound for whatever reason. We came through Thanksgiving, a time of family and friends where most uh, everyone was pretty much alone. It can be a difficult time. But God, you were there in the presence of each and every family and each and every individual. So today as we come to worship, I would pray that your Holy Spirit would fill the room here at the church. That you would bless us so that we in turn can bless you. And Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you will do. We pray it in your precious and holy name. Amen. Star is here with me this morning, and she's going to light our first Advent candle, Star. Good morning, everyone. 
If there ever was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We had hardly known how to describe the year we have just lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Absolutely nothing. We do need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cried out for us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. Mark 13, 24 to 37 says, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. <clears throat> Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at Kakra, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. We light this first candle as a sign of hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. As you may have picked up from Star's Advent reading, um, the theme of our Advent season this year is a messy Advent. It's been a messy year, and yet we've come through with much hope. And so today, the title of our message is Messy Hope. And I'm going to start with some scripture that uh, came to mind and some that I looked up, uh, just reminders of the hope that the Word of God gives us. Psalm 42.5 in part says, put your hope in God. And then we see in Job 13.15, though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Be joyful in hope, painful in affliction, Romans 12.12. 12. Hebrews 6.19 says, we have this hope as an anchor, as an anchor. And then 1 Peter 1, 3 says, God in his great mercy has given us a new birth 
into a living hope. Those are excerpts from the Word of God for the people of God. What is all this talk about hope? And what does it all mean? I found in the concordance of my Bible 32 references to hope, specifically to hope. And so I think that's pretty significant to look into. I would say that we need to pay attention to anything that has 32 references in the Bible, right? We need to look and see what the definition of hope is. One definition of hope that I found refreshing is this. It is to desire something with confident expectation of its fulfillment. I'll give you that again. Hope is a desire to, to is a desire is to desire something with confident expectation of its fulfillment. As I was thinking about all of this, it occurred to me that there are at least two considerations. There is to have hope and there is to be hopeful alike and yet different. All of us, and I'm sure everyone, have been in a situation of having hope. Hope for success <coughs> as we enter into a marriage, hope for the birth of a healthy, healthy baby, etc., etc. Jeremiah 29, 11 says in part, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to harm you, plans to not harm you, but to give you hope for the future. Then most of us have been in a situation where we, we've experienced a feeling of hopelessness. When it seems that there is nothing left that we can do. And for we girls that are determined and focused, and there's three of them here this morning, three of us here this morning, that's a hard pill to swallow that we can't do anything about the situation anymore. There's no light at the end of the tunnel when there's hopelessness. And there are those, my friends, who live their lives in abject poverty, abuse, living paycheck to paycheck, getting further in the hole every week, a life of hopelessness. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this. Here is where we come in we can help establish hope in the hopeless. We can help the hopeless become hopeful because we know the answer that provides hope and that hope is only found in Christ Jesus. Each one of us is created in the image of God and God is love. So to be fully human is to love and love brings hope. One thing leads to another. Now we've talked about this before, about how love is a relationship. It's not just a feeling. Love is an investment of ourselves in others, in those that we love. When we love someone, we work hard to see that their needs are met. We don't want them to go without. And when we expand that love to community, it's not a solo act. We can't do it alone. It's a group performance. It's a reaching out to meet needs. So when we invest in community, we begin to create hope in that community. I was reading a story recently by a guy whose mom had recently passed away and he was her only surviving child so he was charged with cleaning out her apartment there was the usual collection of memorabilia and as he sorted through papers and pictures and ditties and bits he began to reminisce his mom you see had been a survivor of a nazi concentration camp she wasn't a Jew. She was a Roman Catholic from Austria. 
But for unknown reasons in 1944, the Gestapo came to capture this mom, his, his mom, her entire family, and much of their community. She was 15 years old at the time. Soon she was separated from all that she knew, her family, her friends. She was shipped off to a filthy concentration camp full of thousands of others waiting to die of starvation, disease, torture, or execution. Somehow, his mom eventually escaped it all and made her way to the U.S. where she married and started a family. She became a U.S. citizen. And he began to realize once again what he had nearly forgotten about his mom, that she, through all of her trials, never lost hope. She was hopeful in all things, and it uh, reflected in her daily actions and beliefs. She was not naive. She knew that in every community, there were those that saw themselves as superior. She had lived a realization that eventually some people might even be considered disposable because she had lived that life. She recognized that we humans tend to organize ourselves into um, categories of winners and losers, haves and have-nots, somebodies and nobodies. But her faith in the love of God that brings hope helped her to believe that there is a better way and that each of us can make a difference. She believed in a better way. The author called his mom a tender-hearted realist. I like that, a tender-hearted realist. She saw things for what it was, but she still had a heart for people and giving them hope. She was always holding out for hope. Now, Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of heaven, but he wasn't talking only about eternity. The kingdom of God can be right here, right now, by extending hope and hopefulness to others. To become fully human requires being in a community whose care belief is compassion, caring for others, and loving our neighbor as ourselves is a wonderful start. Friends, we cannot become somebody by making anybody else a nobody. Let me say that again. We cannot become somebody by making someone else a nobody. You can't be a winner by making someone else a loser. This is why the lottery doesn't work. It takes a million and a half losers to make one million dollar winner. But we never look at it that way. Jesus' words in Matthew 35, 40 remind us, just as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. But if you feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the prisoner and house the homeless, you seal your citizenship in eternity. By doing nothing, you renounce that citizenship with your indifference to others. Sometimes we even do that with cruelty and selfishness. We have the ability to take away any shred of hope the needy might have been hanging on to. My friends, where there is love, there is God. And where there is God, hope never fails. And when we have hope, we can keep taking the next step in giving hope to others. 
We may not have much at all, much to give, much to share, but hope costs us nothing, and it's the world to those that have little or no hope. Do you know someone that needs hope? Do you know someone that needs hope that only comes from the love of God? Then I have an idea. Show them. Show them the love of God. Tell them about the love of God and what God has done in your life. Walk with them and demonstrate hope. Hope, my friends, came to us in the form of a baby in a manger. Unexpected, messy, amazing hope. Not what the world expected in any way. God knew what this world needed and provided for us perfectly. Let us be the hope to a world that desperately needs it. Let us pray. God, we may be the only hope that someone sees. Even giving a smile, buying someone a sandwich, giving a listening ear oftentimes. So many people are so lonely and they need someone to sit and listen. And God, you, in your amazing way, you gave us two ears and one mouth for just that reason, to zip our lip and to use our ears to listen. And then and only then do we reach out to give hope. God, be with us in this first week of Advent. As we anticipate the first of the slippery roads, protect those that are out and about. And Father, help us to always be a reflection of who you made us to be. We pray it in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Enjoy a little bit of music. God bless you. And we'll see you Wednesday for the Wednesday Words of Wisdom at 9 a.m.